February in the city is depressing. Remnants of snow lie in the shadows, and the bare ashen branches of trees thrust upwards into the clear blue sky, while in the distance one or two kites are floating. In my hometown, February was the time for kites. The willows on the ground are putting out their shoots, and the early mountain peaches have budded. If you hear the whir of pinwheels and raise your head, you might see one of those crab kites or a blue centipede kite. I never liked flying kites. As a matter of fact, I, I hated them. My younger brother's greatest delight was kites. He couldn't buy one and I wouldn't allow him to fly one. So he'd just stand there for half a day at a time, looking up at the sky, watching the kites. I was embarrassed. I thought he was ridiculous, foolish, lazy. One day, it occurred to me that I hadn't seen him around much. Was he avoiding me? I had noticed him picking up bamboo sticks in the courtyard. Suddenly it dawned on me. Was he making a kite? As I pushed open the door of a small deserted storeroom, I discovered him sitting there hard at work, making a toy. Propped against the table was the bamboo framework of a butterfly kite, not yet pasted with paper. I was glad that I discovered his secret, but furious that he could have tricked me. I trampled on his kite and stalked out proudly.
leaving him in despair in that little room. What he did after that I neither knew nor cared. Long after we'd parted ways, I read a foreign book about children and learned for the first time how important toys are. Toys hold children's hopes, and to play is to dream. Twenty years later, I suddenly realized how I'd crushed my brother's spirit. And at that instant, my heart seemed to turn to lead and sink heavily down and down. My heart did not break. It just simply sank down and down. <laughs> 